Hello guys, um, here we have a nice uh, Bose subwoofer unit that doesn't turn on. It's completely dead. You see the model is PS28-3. To the left here we see the five speaker outputs. Then there is the input where the cable from the media center is connected to. And to the right the AC power input. This is the media unit through which all audio and video signals are routed and the display unit on top. The back cover is held by a few screws and after removing them we see the amplifier for the speakers. Then the little flat cable that goes inside the subwoofer and a cable for AC power and then one that comes back from the interior of the subwoofer. AC power goes first through a fuse. This one here was not blown but with the problem we are about to find it may very well be blown too. So that's something you have to verify. Then in order to get access to the power supply of the subwoofer unit we need to remove these screws here. And on the inside there are three connectors. That's AC power in, DC power out and the subwoofer speaker connector. Removing the metal cover brings us to the main power supply circuit. I had the input and output already checked on the closed unit, but I will show it here again. AC in is 120 volt, and there's nothing at the output when trying to turn on the unit. I won't show the signals on the flat cable. They are uh, they are irrelevant here, but there's one control signal towards one of the optocouplers too, and of course the audio signal to the for the subwoofer unit. Now, in order to gain access to the underside of the power supply board and figure out how it works, we remove these screws. And also the heatsink needs to be removed. I removed the clips to separate heatsink from power amplifier transistors later, but you can leave the clips in place, just be careful not to bend the transistor terminals too much or they may break. There's a half bridge of which one MOSFET is shorted in all directions. It's already removed here where the holes are. When this happens we can be pretty sure that the whole gate drive circuitry was affected. And sure enough, there are holes in the gate resistors. And even though the other MOSFET doesn't read a complete shot, it's definitely a good idea to replace it as well. We can assume that the controller chip outputs are also defective. So these are the components that will be replaced for this repair. The diodes are faulty and need to be replaced too. They serve to discharge the MOSFET gates faster than they are charged, which helps to avoid cross-conduction of the power MOSFETs. The power MOSFETs come in TO220 full pack packages. That's the letters FP after the TO220. Be sure you get this isolated version, nothing else. The signal diode is probably the MBBD, no, MMBD4148. So here's an overview of all the parts that need to be replaced if you find one or both of the power MOSFETs to be defective on this board. The thermal pad or thermal paste they use needs to be removed and the heatsink cleaned. Make sure you do not bend the heatsink, its surface should remain intact and flat. 
uh, otherwise the heat transfer from MOSFET to heatsink will suffer. And the horrible glue that was in here could be left in place maybe, but I removed it anyway and the best way to do this is heating it and then just pushing it aside with a flat screwdriver. Make sure you don't bend the heatsink or crack the transformer ferrite core while doing this. Before putting everything back together, I'd recommend doing a little test run first. You can assemble the power MOSFETs on the other side of the PCB. And here I put a 4 amp fast fuse in series with the lower MOSFETs source terminal. And if anything goes wrong, it should burn before the MOSFET does. So here, uh, for this test, everything worked as expected. So now it's time to put everything back together. Put a thin layer of thermal paste between heatsink and MOSFET or use a heat transfer pad like I did here. The transistor can be pushed all the way down and after that the little metal clip will be pushed on top. And only then, that's important, only after having everything in place, transistors and clips, only after that the transistor terminals can be soldered on the PCB. Now the flux residues on the PCB could be removed with alcohol or you can just leave them there. So here again all the parts that have been replaced, contro uh, controller chip, gate resistors and diodes and the two power MOSFETs. Now if you separated the amplifier transistors from their heatsink, as I did, you need to make sure to put some material in between for the heat transfer. And this could be a mica and thermal paste or an insulating heat transfer pad. Do not just use any heat transfer pad, it needs one it needs to be one that's specifically made to be an electrical insulator and heat conductor. The one I have here is the seal pad K10 from Berkwist, but a mica with a very thin layer of thermal paste will do just fine. Or my guess is even a thin captain tape would work reasonably well. And in my case I had the 470 picofarad capacitors near the transistors removed so I will put some hot glue back in here to hold them in place. Now mount the metal cover and assemble the power supply into the woofer housing. We power up the unit again and the two LEDs flash happily ever after. Yeah, thanks guys for watching and uh, see you next time. Good luck with your repair.